Dear brothers and sisters, in this day and age when we deal with one another financially or when we go into contracts or when we you know, make business deals with one another, each one of us has that story of getting burned by someone that they loved or that story of actually wronging someone else and burning someone else without other people knowing it. But all of us have gone through things in life where we were excited about something and then suddenly that excitement was turned into something else when we realized that the person that we were doing business with, even if they were family members, or that person that we loaned money to, even if, if we thought that we didn't even need to do a contract, we didn't even need to document the loan, whatever it may be, quickly the script changed. And it became not only that you lost some of your money or you lost what you thought, you know, either justifiably or unjustifiably was a right of yours, but you lost a friendship and you lost a relationship. And it's a very sad, reality that in this day and age we see entire families fall apart over businesses we see people follow you know relationships long time friends lifelong friends at times even uh, ending their relationship over some sort of agreement and obviously we see the cheating here and there uh, between Muslims on a daily basis and between Muslims and non-Muslims even it doesn't matter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give you permission to deceive anybody you know you go to someone thinking they're going to help you with something and they end up burning you over and over and over again. It's a very serious situation. And SubhanAllah, when you look at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and you look at the early generations of Islam, wronging someone, you know, financially especially, was a lot more difficult because things were a lot more tangible. We live in a day and age of invisible money, right? I mean, back then, you steal someone's lands. You put something in the grain that doesn't belong there, right? You cheat with the weights. These are things that are a lot more obvious and a lot more visible to the eyes. These days, you know, you could cheat someone and it could be all digital and no one would ever know. And you get away with it or you think you get away with it in this earth. And the Prophet ﷺ, he simply told us, and this is one of the greatest warnings of the Messenger ﷺ, that oppression and transgression is darkness upon darkness upon darkness on the Day of Judgment. That all of these things will come back to get you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold a goat accountable for harming another goat or an animal that had horns for attacking another animal that didn't have horns. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even starts to question mankind, then we know where we stand on the day of judgment in regards to our transgressions. And for the believer, there's a great area of concern, not just with seeking you know, comfort from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all of the times transgression is committed against him, but the fear of wronging someone else. And that's what concerned the Sahaba most. Because to be wronged in this world is to lose something of this world. To wrong someone in this world is to lose something in the hereafter. And the hereafter is where you really don't want to mess things up, where you really don't want to lose anything. You know, when we're talking about money, when we're talking about expectations, when we're talking about unfulfilled rights and obligations. And that's why the most you know, severe of them are the family obligations. Right? There are certain things that, that should go without saying, right? but you neglect those things. But when we're talking about doing business with one another, when we're talking about going into agreements with one another, when we're talking about you know, this world of, of, of money that's really an illusion and the bubble that we're on, and all of this invisible stuff at work, at play, and how we wrong one another on a consistent basis. If you get into a dispute with someone, or someone that you love gets into a dispute with someone else, you are not supporting your brother. When you help your brother or your sister in their dhulm, in their transgression, in their oppression, you're not doing them a favor when you have their back because of how close they are to you. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, you stop your brother when he's wronging and when he's wrong. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we know exactly what to do when someone is wronged. But how are we supposed to help a dhalim? How are we supposed to help our brother when he's transgressing? And the Prophet ﷺ said, you stop him. You don't have his back per se. You don't say, okay, I'm going to stick with you and I'm going to argue for you and I'm going to fight for you. Even if it's your own child, subhanAllah. You're not doing them a favor when you're helping them commit dhulm, when you're helping them oppress, and you're helping them transgress. And when you look at the life of the Messenger wasallam, you find that subhanAllah, even in the smallest things, the Prophet wasallam preaches this doctrine of justice and fairness. And once that discussion of what is just and what is unjust starts to take place, whether it's family or money, or just an argument, then all of that goes out the window. Even if you hate that person, even if you hate the other person, once the discussion starts, you're not sitting there letting the scenes play through your head. I remember last time when we were talking and he was bragging about this and he was bragging about that. And mashallah, this brother, mashallah, you're looking at him and you, you know, you've got the hearts coming out of your head. 
as you're looking at that person, you're looking at the other person, and you can't wait to express your neutral opinion in favor of the one that you love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if you hate that other person, don't let that stop you from being just. You don't have to love that person, but you have to ensure that they're treated justly. You have to make sure that if you're going to say something about this, then you have to make sure you're speaking justly, that you're not wronging another person. This is serious business here. What the Prophet ﷺ is mentioning to us throughout these various ahadith. And look, it might be that in this world, you think that, you want, you get into an argument, you get into a dispute, mashallah, you bring someone, you bring, you bring, you bring someone to arbitrate, and just for some reason, that person judges in your favor, or it never even reaches that level. You're able to wrong someone else, and you think that you've moved on. But what did the Sahaba really fear? They feared that person calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night and making dua against them. That's serious business then. He says to Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, O oh Mu'adh, fear the dua of the oppressed. I swear that there is no veil, no hijab between that dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ said, even a veil. There is nothing between that dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if that person was a disbeliever, even if it's a non-Muslim. If you wrong that person and that person calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and makes dua against you, then you're in trouble. Even if you're the most pious person in the world and that's the most wicked person in the world, this is an issue of dhulm. Allah doesn't accept an injustice for His servants. He won't accept that the most righteous person in the world who wouldn't wrong anyone, even if, you know, if, if they were the most righteous person in the world, but someone who appears to be righteous, wrong someone who's wicked. So it's, it's, it's beautiful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, don't let your hatred for a person stop you from being just towards them and establishing their right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself will not let the fact that that person is a disbeliever in Him and that person doesn't fulfill the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from showing that person justice. Allah won't let their dua when they are wronged be unanswered. So when Allah tells us to do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself does that you don't let your hatred for a person cause you to be unjust towards them. And there's something very dangerous here. Because you know what? We cannot stop the mazloom, the oppressed one, from calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against us. You can't stop the person that you wrong from making dua. You can take everything in the world from them here, but you will not take away their connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when that person that you've wronged financially, or in regards to family, or you insulted them, or you mocked them, or you backbited them, raises their hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're not gonna take a lawyer with you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here's something very profound that the Prophet ﷺ tells us. That two people came to the Prophet ﷺ quarreling over some property. So once again, a financial dispute. They came to the, to the door of the Prophet ﷺ, and Rasulullah ﷺ, he came out and he said, listen, disputes come to me all the time. This is the Messenger of Allah ﷺ speaking. Disputes come to me all the time. And he says that it may be that one of you is more eloquent than the other. You just defend your case better. It's not, that you're, it's not that you're a better person or that you're right. You're just a better lawyer. You just come up there and you just speak better. You defend yourself better. The other person is too emotional. The other person isn't as eloquent. So the Prophet ﷺ says, listen, one of you might be you know, just a better representative of himself in this situation. And so I think to myself, or the Prophet ﷺ says, I will judge that person to be truthful. And the Prophet ﷺ says, so I will rule in that person's favor on the basis of that. The Prophet ﷺ says, so if you come to me and you just represent yourself better, and I judge in your favor at the expense of that other person's right, it's gonna happen in this world. A person won't get their fair shot in court. A person won't get their fair share in a dispute, whether it's a family dispute or a financial dispute. But the Prophet ﷺ says, if you come in front of me and I judge in your favor on the basis of you simply defending that case better, then go ahead and choose your, your portion of hellfire. It's yours. In essence, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, it's your choice. Either you can take your hellfire or you can leave it. You make that judgment call at that point. And what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us is simply reality. Look, if anyone has ever arbitrated between two people, you might actually try to do justice. And you might, you might even go to the extent of wronging your family because you, you so badly want to be just. But then someone comes in front of you, you're human. Someone comes in front of you and starts crying and is very eloquent. So if someone comes to you victimized, you help that person. But at the same time, you don't judge against the other person until you hear that person's song. Then you make your judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned 
for each person their right. Don't ever interfere with the right of that person. And when you find yourself into, in a dispute, always be on the side of caution. If you can afford to, be on the side of caution. I'm not going to stop you from making dua against the person that wrongs you. Go ahead, say, Oh Allah, if they wrong me and you know that they wrong me, then you can do something. Or you could forgive them and that's greater, that's ihsan. It's excellence. To forgive is better. If you can afford to forgive, then do so and say, You know what? I don't even want this dispute. Oh Allah, forgive that person and give me the reward. That's the greatest thing that you can do in a situation, in a quarrel or in a dispute. Or you could make sure that you did not wrong that person, give them, you know, uh, you know, seed a little bit or, or give a little bit up in that dispute and say, Oh Allah, you know my situation, you know what they, what they did for me. Oh Allah, give me the reward of what they have done to me. Give me the reward of that. Well, you can do that as well. But do not find yourself in a situation of wronging another person no matter what the situation is. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from wronging anyone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to purify our homes, to purify our hearts, to purify us from all forms of transgression, even if it be transgression against ourselves. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people that establish the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and that establish the rights of others upon us as well. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.